Hey guys, it's Julia from Zed Square Crafts. I'm so happy to be over on the Ellie Way Stamps channel today sharing a card that I created and I'm going to share some of my watercoloring for card maker tips as we go along. I'm going to try not to talk too quickly but I do have quite a bit that I'd like to mention so if you have any questions feel free to ask me in the comments below or you can always check out my blog where I have listed the information as well as my YouTube channel and there will be links in the description below to all of those things. So to begin my first tip is that the ink and paper matter. Try to use a waterproof ink. In this case, I used VersaFine Onyx Black ink to stamp that little penguin from the Penguins on Parade stamp set. And also try to use a watercolor paper. Watercolor paper will help hold the water a lot better than a cardstock and it will also help your colors move a lot more naturally. So even an inexpensive watercolor paper is better than a cardstock if you do plan on watercoloring. My next tip is that if you heat emboss an image after you stamp it, that the heat embossing will help the ink stay inside the lines. In this case, I didn't do that because this image is quite large and it's not that detailed, but if you're doing something more detailed, definitely try out that tip if you find that the watercolors are just a little bit too messy and runny. The next tip is to just use what you have. This kind of runs into the following tip, which is mix your own colors. Watercolors are available in like a zillion different formats. Um, in this case, I'm using a small compact watercolor set from Cotman, Windsor, and Newton. Um, and I love this set. In order to get the most out of it, I do typically mix my own colors. If you have trouble mixing colors, I recommend just Googling it. So in this case, I mixed gray. So if you were going to do that yourself and you hadn't seen this video, you could just Google how to mix gray and tons of tutorials and suggestions will come up. Today for my gray, I mixed blue, purple, and brown. I am letting the water do the work for me, for the most part. You saw at the beginning there that I laid down a thin layer of clear water before I added any of my paint to my penguin and that really just helps move the colors around and helps with that really natural watercolor look. I'm starting by applying the paint on the furthest outer edge so that I do create some kind of shadowing and then I'm just guiding the paint onto the inside of the little penguin. I'm also adding a little yellow belly just for good measure. I looked, I used Google before I started this to kind of get some reference pictures and a lot of the penguins that you see have a little yellow on their bellies so that's why I'm adding that. Another tip is to um, use layers. Watercolors are transparent so if you allow the colors to dry in between each layer you'll find that you get a really natural watercolor effect because you can see the color through from the previous layer you'll find that the results are a lot more interesting and dynamic, I would say. I'm going to finish my penguin by um, adding this second layer of grey, as well as adding some pink to add a little life to the penguin's cheeks, and finishing up with the beak and uh, feet. For the beak and feet, I'm just mixing some yellow and orange, and then I'm making sure that I don't have too much paint on my paintbrush before I apply the color to my little penguin. For the pink on the cheeks, I'm just going to dilute some red paint and make sure I have plenty of water. And then in this case, this is really a perfect example of just letting the water do the work for me. You saw that the color kind of spread, and it makes a really natural look. I'm coloring this penguin in a very pastel um, way but if you wanted to have a more pigmented look I would suggest um, adding less water to your colors and also if you really don't like the transparent um, property of watercolor you should check out some gouache paints they are also a water based um, paint but um, or sorry they're both they're also a watercolor but they have more pigment so you'll get a darker more um, vibrant look to create the background for my card, I again lay down some water in um, a sort of round shape in the center of my watercolor paper, and then I'm just adding in some two different tones of green, and then I'll dry those with my heat tool so that again I can add some layers and create a really dynamic and dimensional look. This um, applies whether you're doing it like I am right now, um, where I'm just really laying down the color. It's the same principle when I was coloring the penguin and I wanted those that first layer of gray to show through. 
Once I'm finished coloring this background, I will set it aside so that I can move on to finish my penguin. I am going to stamp on some accessories to my penguin and you'll see here in a moment that I use my Stampamajig to line up the, um, I guess it's like an iPod that the penguin can wear. This stamp set from the Alleyway Stamps is so awesome. I'm sure you've seen um, tons of people use it because it there's just like so many different options for different ways to dress up these penguins. In this case, um, he's my penguin is listening to some music and kind of having a groovy old time. Um, there is actually a headphone stamp as well. They're like um, big kind of old school headphones. Sadly, when I was creating my little penguin, I completely forgot to add the headphones and it wasn't until it was finished that I realized I'd left them out and at that point I didn't want to go back and restart but definitely if you're making the music penguin you can add some little headphones. Once I finished stamping the iPod and again for that I used my VersaFine Onyx black ink and in that case it's not because I'm really going to be adding much water or anything like that it's more just so that all the blacks match. I wanted to create kind of like a sparkly iPod so I'm using some um, um, white eyeshadow shimmer powder. The main ingredient in this shimmer powder is mica and so that's um, the same as what I believe you find in Perfect Pearls. So I just added a little bit of water and then I added it onto the iPod and set that aside to dry. Next I knew I needed to add some music notes so that my penguin would be able to have a dancing good time. So I pulled the two music note stamps from the Alleyway Stamps Trees Company stamp set and um, stamped those using VersaFine Onyx Black ink. In a couple cases I didn't get a super great impression so once the um, ink was dry I just went back in with a black marker and colored in those areas. Next I'm going to go ahead and adhere down my front watercolor panel to the front of my card. To do that, and you've seen me use this trick before, I just use my stamp -a jig to line up the two top edges so that everything lines up nicely. As a finishing touch, I stamped the Happy Everything stamp that came in the um, Penguins on Parade stamp set, and then I'm going to finish the card off with an Action Wobbler Spring so that my penguin really can dance and groove. <laughs> <laughs> That's it for the card today. I hope that you found these tips helpful. Like I said, you can find a link to my blog as well as my YouTube channel in the description below. If you have any questions, feel free to let me know. Thanks so much. Bye!